And welcome in as we dive into all things people, power, and politics with just 47 days to go before Election Day. I'm Rup Raj. We're glad you're making us a part of your nightly routine. It's an important time in our country, and this is your one-stop shop to get the day's politics minus the bias, minus the hate, minus the vitriol. This is a time you can actually put your phone down and spend the next half hour getting the facts and a lot to get into tonight. Hard to believe it's already been a month since Novi native Paul Whelan stepped off a plane onto American soil after five years in a Russian prison. And today we actually heard from him on the steps of Capitol Hill how he says he survived the ordeal. And two candidates, two very different plans when it comes to your money. We'll break down those plans and get analysis from a money expert about the pros and cons of Trump and Harris's America when it comes to your pocketbook. And speaking of money, another day, another chapter in the budget bill battle on Capitol Hill. The U.S. House shooting down a government spending bill with a controversial measure linked to it. That bill would have funded the government for six months but also includes a measure that would require proof of citizenship when registering to vote. And that was a huge sticking point. And here's the deal. It's already a felony for non-citizens to register to vote. And studies show non-citizens voting is very, very rare, extremely rare by some people's standards. Congress has until October 1st to pass a spending bill or it'll trigger a partial shutdown. We've seen this movie before. Turning now to the campaign trail, a movie you haven't seen yet between Harris and Trump, a battleground break for both VP Harris and former President Donald Trump. The two of them had been on a blitz through key swing states, and they'll pick that back up. Today, we also learned the Teamsters Union said, hey, we aren't endorsing either of these two. Trump was in New York, Uniondale, the name of the town to be specific. That's over on Long Island visiting an area that could be key in the battle for the House. Long Island has a congressional race being closely watched right now. Vice President Harris was in Washington. She spoke at the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute's leadership conference addressing a controversial topic, the border. Harris said the country can find a pathway to citizenship while securing the border at the same time. But Harris will be in Metro Detroit tomorrow with Oprah Winfrey. She's holding a live stream event. It'll run from 8 until 10 tomorrow evening, and we'll have a full recap on The Pulse. Back now to Capitol Hill now, and lawmakers demanding more answers after investigators caught a man they say was trying to assassinate former President Donald Trump on his Florida golf course, Mar-a-Lago. The second attempt on his life after he was grazed by a bullet during a Pennsylvania rally, lawmakers say they aren't getting answers quickly enough as they debate whether the Secret Service needs more cash, more money, more help, or serious management changes. Take a look. I want more information about what happened in Florida last weekend. I think the Secret Service owes an explanation to the American people, not just to a task force. We need to know, you know, what was happening with their drones, uh, the, the helicopter they had, what did they see, why was it the sweep a little further out? I mean, there are lots of questions that remain. Now, the would-be gunman was able to camp out for 12 hours along the fence line with a rifle before authorities spotted the rifle barrel poking out of the shrubs. Well, it's been a month since the heartwarming scene played out on the tarmac of Joint Base Andrews. You saw it live here on The Pulse. Novi native Paul Whelan, home after more than five years in a Russian prison. Now, a month later, he was on Capitol Hill thanking the lawmakers who helped set him free. Whelan was jailed in 2018 and given a 16-year prison sentence for allegedly spying. Now, he described how he got through this terrible ordeal. It was, it was due to people like my parents who grew up in England during the war. Um, it was that kind of, you know, resiliency that saw them through their childhood in, in England, and that's how I grew up. So when the Russians abducted me from my hotel room, um, I just put that same sort of resiliency into, into action, and, you know, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Um, they were probably glad to see me leave, to be quite honest, um, but, you know, here I am. Great to see his image with the beautiful capital behind him and not a Russian prison. Whelan was released along with Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich and 16 others in a massive prisoner swap. Now to our other big story of the night. We keep going back to that James Carville quote from 1992. It's the economy, stupid, because it's an issue that impacts every single one of us. And it's still very true 32 years later. And tonight we're sitting down with a financial advisor to talk about what both Trump and Harris's plans could mean for you as well as getting reaction from a Democrat and a Republican. But to give you some context, we want to give you a quick overview, a non-biased look at both the Trump and Harris plans. 
Here's how we're going to water it down. Trump's tax cuts are how he feels he can best help the middle class. Now, some of his former advisors say average economic growth would top 3% under that plan, despite the fact it never hit that mark when he was in office. But the median household income did jump by more than $5,200 between 2018 and 2019. But Trump also wants to charge higher tariffs on imports to grow jobs. It's not clear tonight how high they'd be, but Trump has proposed a broad tariff of 10%, but suggested last month it could be as high as 20%. Now, for the other side of the ticket, the Harris side, one of the biggest headlines of her plan so far is that $25,000 in down payment assistance that you heard about for first-time home buyers. Now, there's also something else. She wants to say, hey, let's give new parents a $6,000 tax credit for these parents. She also wants to increase federal tax incentives for small business startups from $5,000 to $50,000, hoping to bring in $25 million dollars by doing that for small business applications during a four-year term. It's the Penn Wharton budget model, analysis by economists at the University of Pennsylvania. Now, they project Harris tax and spending proposals would actually increase the deficit by $1.2 trillion over the next 10 years. Trump's, on the other hand, would increase it by $5.8 trillion. Now, the biggest difference, Trump plans to extend tax cuts while Harris would not. But as for who's better for the economy, that plan, that's actually up to you. And this show, as you know, is all about you. So we're getting a pulse check asking if you're better off financially now than you were four years ago. Take a look. If we're gonna talk numbers and talk business and costs, again, expenses are up for business and also personal living. But the dev divisiveness and what went on in those years, I still trade it for higher prices. Well, in the past with Trump, I didn't know where it was going because Trump was unstable uh, as a leader, so I never knew what tangent he was going to go on and where that was going to take the economy. With Biden, of course, there is a stable leadership in Biden and Kamala Harris that I can depend on. I'm hoping for more unity, more people getting out there and getting good jobs again. But the bottom line is that we have to come together as a people. Now, we're out there every day asking you what you think. And by the way, I go out with my cell phone. If you see me out there a few times a week, I head out with my phone and I ask you the questions that we like to ask you every night. And we also put the question on fox2detroit.com. If you want to weigh in, you know the drill. Just scan that QR code right there at the bottom right of your screen. So far as you see here, most of you, 82% say no, you aren't better off. But if you're someone who's not sure which plan is best for you, we've got an expert in the hot seat. The pros and cons of both plans. You're watching The Pulse on Fox 2. Back now on The Pulse, looking at all things people, power, and politics, and how it'll impact your bank account this year. Dan Casey with Bridge River Advisors is in the hot seat tonight. We thank him for being here. And by the way, we're about to talk about Harris's plan and Trump's plan. And Casey's going to talk about it from an objective point of view, talking about what each plan offers that could be good or bad, depending on where you stand on the financial spectrum here. So we thank you for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. Uh, we'll just go in alphabetical order. Harris first, right? Yes. yes. Uh, for Harris, she has some lofty goals. One of them is, uh, one of the headlines of her plan is, hey, let's do a $25,000 down payment assistance for some new home buyers. Yes. Um, is that something that's feasible or does that seem more of like a campaign push that would be very hard to get through. Yeah, it's definitely a, it's definitely a campaign push. And, they're, they're, and of course, they're all doing that right now. But um, I think something like that could could uh, get through. It's it's. Uh, I don't think it would be very costly in the sense that I don't think that there'd be a whole lot of people, according to the the income requirements that she had in there. Um, I don't think there'd be a lot that would uh, that would be able to take advantage of it. Is the problem. So I don't think it would be a huge issue to get through. That's interesting because so many people see this, and I, I hate to say it because you know me on the show. I pick on social media because it's a there's a lot to pick on. Yeah, right. People go on there and they say things that aren't true, like everybody 
$25,000 for everybody. That's not what she's saying it's here. This is something for a very small number of people. Yes, exactly. Even when they when they jump over to like uh, means testing for Social Security, making you know the rich pay more, it's again the the rich. It's it's a very small part of Social Security. It's not going to make that big of a difference. It's it's a lot of it's, again. It's just a lot of campaigning right now. Let's talk a little bit about the Trump plan. Um, so many people who criticize uh, his tax cuts, they say that you're only hitting the tax cuts for the richest of people. But we've seen when he's been president and before that he he made tax cuts for middle class folks as well right to he be did. fair yes Talk he did about that. yeah and it kind of worked it was you know we had the lowest unemployment we saw in 50 years we had a a really really good economy um, so yeah he cut the the tax rates it was about four or five percent on average I think for everybody um, corporation taxes he dropped it to 21 percent and again people look at that as helping the wealthy but we do have to remember the wealthy are usually the ones who own the companies that employ us. Um, so it's it's if it gives them more money, they're able to hire more people. And again, linking back to the, you know uh, a really great economy when he was uh, president. So we know what that's going to look like. And that's something that he's really run on and wants to remind people about because so much time has passed. In the meantime, we have inflation and the inflationary. Uh, prices for groceries and gas and everything in between that's been a huge campaign point in your mind not as a campaign advisor but as someone who's looking at the economy what needs to happen to bring that inflation continue to bring it down yeah I think you know what they're doing right now um, we're, we're at probably about I think it's in the mid mid twos you know high twos which is why the Fed today cut the rates uh, 50 basis points which was kind of a shock uh, kind of implying showing us that they're 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 going to hold steadfast and, and be very strong and continue to drop those rates throughout the year if it is to spur the economy but inflation is headed down and I think it's it's going to continue to to head that way and it, it, and it has to because one of the two uh, mandates of the Federal Reserve is to make sure inflation is at two percent so if, if it doesn't continue to go down there, then they will rate, maybe go back to raising rates a little bit just to kind of curb the growth a little bit. You've taken a close look at both the Harris plan and the Trump plan. Uh, back to Harris for a moment. What is it in her plan that you think uh, isn't a campaign promise that would simply be a little bit easier to implement and something that could actually help people? Um, I guess a lot of the a lot of her, their income tax credit that they want that she wants to put in uh, the child tax credit. I think bringing that back would be pretty easy and I think that that would help a lot of people. Um, so that part, I'm, 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 I'm glad that she brought the, those, those back. So I think that'll help a lot of people. And it's about, easy to get through. Yeah, and you heard Trump uh, just in the last few days, in fact, in Flint, talk about tariffs. Um, for those who aren't economists or experts, talk a little bit about how a tariff would impact the customer and the companies that, of course, sell these cars in other countries. Yeah, so the last tariffs that he put on and, and the Biden administration kept them, um, it was mostly steel, uh, washing machines, uh, things like that. And so it really just adds a tax uh, to the to the uh, import. So we're uh, paying more as consumers. But the idea is, um, well, that spurs local uh, uh, businesses in the U.S. to maybe uh, get into the production of it so we can buy more of uh, domestic products. That's the idea. So the tariff obviously hurts the company that's trying to sell the, the stuff. So if it's a Chinese car company or a battery company from overseas, you put a tariff and now it makes it more expensive to buy that product. But yes. it also makes it pricier for the person who wants to buy the product. Yes. And so, but again, but it spurs domestic uh, makers of that uh, to get into it. Now, on the other side, we saw when he did raise the tariffs on washing machines, uh, J.D. Vance came on a, a, a national uh, station and said, you know, the prices uh, didn't go up like people thought they would. Well, they did a little bit, and then they also raised uh, on dryers. They raised the prices. So it really depends on what study you look at. Um, uh, a 10% across the board kind of also negates his, his uh, He's always said that he wants to use it as a as a tool to spur uh, the others to lower the tar tariffs for us. Um, but if you just do a blanket 10%, it's not going to spur anything, right? It's just a blanket 10%. So it's a it just depends on how he uses it. Um, and then he's going to you know propose 60% on Chinese goods. So. We'll have to see how it trickles we're down. Gonna, we're going to watch it carefully. One last yeah. question for you. I feel like there's there's more than one metrics, but there's two metrics we always hear about in the media about how people measure 
the economy. They talk about the Dow Jones, and then they talk about your pocketbook every day. Yeah. If you're not invested heavily in the stock market, and you're a man or woman, like so many of our good viewers, who are literally just trying to make it paycheck to paycheck, and they're not invested in the stock market, the Dow doesn't really make a huge difference for them. What matters is how much it costs to buy things at the grocery store, right? Yes. Talk yes. about that. Yeah, so in inflation, we're back to inflation, right? Um, and it, what we've done by raising interest rates, uh, by slowing the economy and slowing growth, uh, it has worked and it has dropped. You know, inflation was uh, almost 9% couple of years ago now it's it's under three so it's, it's working an interesting conversation that will continue with you thank you so much dan casey for Thanks joining for us me. on the pulse and we've got the financial advisors for a second now we're pitting a democrat and republican against one another just for this sake of a civil debate and we're going to have that when we come back we're watching the pulse thanks All right, back now on The Pulse. You know the mission, people, power, and politics. And here now to debate both former President Trump and VP Harris's economic plans, Democratic campaign manager and consultant Todd Davis and conservative commentator James David Dixon. We thank you both for joining us here on The Pulse. We only have a few minutes, so let's get right to it. Uh, begin with the gentleman sitting right here to my left, even though he's on the right. Uh, James David Dixon, always good to see you. Thank uh, you. Let's talk about this. Um, Trump is talking a lot about tariffs. And uh, as Donald Trump does says uh, the 10 percent perhaps tariff on most goods and then talked about some cars that could have upwards of 100 or 200 percent tariffs where where do you think he's going to land on this and how do you think it's going to affect the economy i don't know about the number he's going to land on but but i know what he's trying to do what he wants to do with the cars especially is keep china from flooding the ev market that's everyone's biggest fear and everyone says american companies have to transition or else china will but the, you know, China's not in the market right now. So the only way they could get in the market is if you build this nationwide network of chargers and kind of, you know, lay the, lay the groundwork for them. So if you make it tough to get those vehicles in here in the first place, that's going to slow them down. That's going to give the Detroit auto industry time to catch up and at least get competitive with Tesla or somebody. But you can't let the market be flooded before the locals are ready. Do you think it's flooded now? Simcog has looked at this and they found that in the case of extreme fast EV adoption, not only does the Detroit auto industry shrink, but Metro Detroit shrinks too. Metro Detroit would actually have fewer people in 2050 than it did in 2020 in, the, in that event. So that's not a scenario that works out well for Detroit. And Trump said that just yesterday in Michigan. Do you think he needs to be more disciplined with his promises and the numbers that he throws out from one rally to another? He needs to be more disciplined, period. It's, it, it's, I mean, you know, sometimes the speeches go too long. Sometimes he says too much. He, he finds himself very entertaining. But, you know, how would I be if I were almost 80 and had been beloved for like 60 of those years publicly? Probably a lot of the same traits. Interesting perspective. Todd, we have, you have an interesting perspective as well. Let's stick with the EVs and the terrorists for a moment. Sure. Um, and, and a little bit about VP Harris. Uh, her plans early on as a senator were, were, by many people's accounts, far left of Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. uh, the Green New Deal was something even President Biden didn't agree with. She has since, in this campaign, moved way off into the center. Um, that's on purpose, isn't it? I assume it could be on purpose. Um, I could uh, I could also assume that there's maybe some other learnings too that we that we've come up with along the way. Uh, I had some friends talking about fracking the other day. That's something that Harris has been accused of being you know very very tough on. But I, I you go back and you look. 10, 15 years ago, I think there was a lot of concern over the environmental impact and the risk that fracking could cause. And I think that what we've seen in the in the decades since is there's still risk, but there's still some reward. So I think it's I think it's smart to be a little more measured. Um, and so I think that that's kind of perhaps tempering some of her her position. It's, it's interesting when you talk to people who are ardent fans of either one of these candidates, not just middle of the road voters, but people who are like loyalists. Uh, when one of the candidates that's on their side changes their stance, it's evolving. But when the other person <laughs> does it, it's a contradiction and yeah. hypocrisy. Sure. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about money, because we, this is what we're talking about here today, specifically when it comes to Bidenomics, Kamala Harris's plan, the inflation that we've noticed already. 
This administration has spent a heck of a lot of money, and you could say Trump did as well. Sure. But let's talk about the Biden administration. Has Harris learned from Biden's mistakes when it comes to the economy, and do you think she'll do something to change course? Well, you know, actually, I would argue that when you look at the at the economy that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris inherited, just like Obama did from you know the Republicans uh, back in 2009, they had they had a big mess on their hands, and uh, certainly inflation was already on the rise uh, at that point. But I think that their tempered and measured approach, um, I think, as we've seen the results. Um, America has, in fact, tamped down inflation faster than any other uh, globalized economy in the world. So we've returned and we've restored to being the largest economy in, in the world. And I think that there's been a lot of great progress uh, in doing so. But the spending, the irony of the Inflation Reduction Act is that so much money was spent on that act, so much money spent in sure. general by this administration. Sure. Is that something sure. that you think she's conscious of and knows that she needs I, to keep I up? have no doubt that she's aware of that. Um, I think that we were looking at some of your projections earlier on where uh, the, you know, they thought that the uh, deficit uh, increases uh, might be much uh, less under a uh, Harris economy. Uh, so I think there's a where. I think that, frankly, when you look at the history of it, I think that Democrats have shown that they are much more fiscally responsible uh, than Republicans have been over, over many, many years. I want to uh, have someone chime in here that uh, you may know very well, Rebecca Kiesling, who has her own thoughts about uh, where we stand with the economy and where we're headed. Take a listen. What she wants to do is going to make things a lot more difficult for everyone and her idea of giving 25,000 for new homeowners first of all like i didn't get that you know normally you you know you have to you have to save you have to be diligent and economic experts are saying that that will only increase the cost of homes by 50,000 and i think that she's just doing a lot of experimentation without being savvy James David Dixon don't you need to invest in people in order to get a return on that investment? And isn't that, a good, isn't that what's happening with Harris's housing plan? That's not what's happening. I mean, the gentleman who was on before said this would affect a small group of people. So I think it's a classic case where you use a big number to draw headlines. Then you look at the fine print and see it's not going to have that big of, a, uh, of an impact. So, so what is it really? It's an attempt to have us talk about it. And, and, and I think it, it's, a, it's a move... It takes government to a, to a realm that's not really helpful. When the Biden administration gave 7,500 for EV buyers, guess what car companies did? Raise the price by 7,500. It's not gonna that. make your house any cheaper. It doesn't make EVs any cheaper. These things just don't work. Okay, let's talk about the working man and the rich. Mary Waters, a councilwoman in Detroit, has this to say about the wealthy, perhaps getting wealthier. Take a listen. So when you have corporations and the rich who benefit from those huge, huge tax breaks, they don't return it to the workers. So Kamala is about protecting the workers, making sure that the workers are able to take care of their families. And that's what this is all about. I'm asking that people just, just take a look at the two. I mean, do you wanna continue to protect the rich? Do you want to make sure that the rich continue to benefit from your hard work? All right, Todd, uh, today the Teamsters say we're not committing to any of these folks. A surprise for many Democrats who wanted that Teamster support. Sure. What is your reaction to that? Sure. Um, not surprised, I guess, to be honest with you. Uh, certainly UAWs, communication workers, a lot of other unions are very, very strong. I, I, I happen to look at uh, Kamala Harris's endorsement list today. It's about 50 pages long. You, I'm just amazed at how many uh, government, uh, you know, even Republicans that are, that are lining up. Um, but I think that the point of this, and, and what I think we've seen is for 40 years, we tried this experiment called trickle-down economics, and we now know that that has been an absolute disaster. We have to declare it dead. We have to look at the opportunity economy where we build people up from the bottom up and the middle out. Two men who have very different ideas about how this country should move forward, joining us with a civil discussion here on The Pulse. I want to thank you both for joining us here tonight. And that is this. Uh, that is it for this edition of The Pulse. Battleground with SE Cup is next. I'm Rupraj. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you, Paul.